Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Cooking with Jesse. Today I'm bringing you two previous feed videos that are fishy delights, my fish sauce and my grilled fish as well as a quite oniony and quite flavorful DIY. Stay tuned. Today I'll be making for you one of my special favorites, my grilled fish and grilled plantain. You guys are going to love this. Today I'm making grilled fish and here I have my fish as a beautiful spicy and I'm going to start with the marinade. Okay, so we're making the marinade for the tilapia fish and I'm going to start by one teaspoon of garlic paste. Start by adding one teaspoon of garlic paste, half a teaspoon of ginger paste. Don't want to put too much ginger in there. One tablespoon of pepper paste because I like my grill spicy. Measure that in. And I'll have my barbecue sauce, two tablespoons of barbecue sauce while grilling after all. So, put that up. One, oops, just a bit over the top there, but you know, a little extra doesn't hurt, right? Close this up, and then I'm going to add two stock cubes. Pick those up. One in, two. I'm going to add my oil, my vegetable oil. One teaspoon of oil. And then we mix this up. So, mix that up. Stir, stir, stir. I'm so excited. Look at that red luscious color. This is going to taste so good. And then just a pinch of salt. And we're ready to get this into our fish. Guys, so I have my tilapia fish here and I'm going to score this. Put cut some. So this is how to score your fish. Make sure it's not too deep. Okay, so you have to score your fish. And that's just basically making an indentation in the skin, so you have to use a really sharp knife for it, one that I don't have. That's one done. Do one more on this side and then I'll flip the fish. There. Now flip the fish. Start again. there so we've got our fish scored and now it's time for the fun part so going to take our herbs so i have some rosemary here and i have some thyme some fresh rosemary fresh thyme and we're going to stuff this baby up so good it's going to get aromatic and delicious so i'm gonna cut this so i can get everything evenly so start here the trick is push everything in. Rosemary, thyme. I think I should alternate between rosemary and thyme. What do you guys think? Rosemary, thyme, 
rosemary. One more. Thyme. Don't want to put too much on this side because we still have the other side to go. Flip. Rosemary. Thyme. Rosemary. Run out of rosemary, so just put more thyme in here. And then I have a slit over here, just going to put more spices, more herbs in here. Cut the roots, then stuff this. The reason I'm doing this, the, the herbs will give it all its flavor and it will become very aromatic. And your grill and everything else you're going to be eating with this with will be just mwah. so I'm done stuffing it I think I tried and now I'm going to get my pastry brush and I'm going to brush this lightly get my marinade into all the cuts so put that in try and get it all in there The marinade smells delicious and I can just tell that this fish is going to be the bomb, guys. Put as much marinade as I can in there. Maybe I should do this better with a spoon. Get as much marinade as I can in there. Make it all juicy. And I'm going to leave just a bit for brushing it while it's on the grill. So remember not to use all of the marinade. Just lightly brush the skin here. Flip it and lightly brush. Okay guys, so I've marinated the fish, stuffed it with the aromatic. Now it's time to place it on the grill. So I have my grill on medium high, high heat. I'm going to place the fish. Oh, that is always very satisfying. And here's my second one that I did. Oh, always a pleasure hearing that. Okay, so I'm going to leave it on the grill for 30 to 35 minutes and then we'll rotate it, we'll flip it every 10 minutes. Since we're grilling, I decided to get a side and we're serving this with roasted plantains, guys. Always a special. <laughs> I'm not peeling it like it's a banana. What's wrong with me? Okay, guys, so I'm going to slit this open, peel off the skin, and I decided I'm going to score it a little bit. So just on the sides, just small indentations here, here. Flip it. Make it look beautiful. And then on the grill. So I'm doing another one. And we're going to keep at it until I've got all my plantains on the grill. Guys, that fish looked amazing and I can't wait to dig in. But for now, I'm going to stick with the juice. Welcome back, guys. I'm very sure you enjoyed the grilled fish video. Give us your comments, your feedback, and everything in between on all my social media handles. Don't forget to subscribe, to like, and to click on the notification button just so that you get all the videos that will be posted here. Don't forget to click that. Okay, guys? So what am I making today? I am making an amazing, aromatic and intensely flavorful spring onion oil. So for this I have my spring onion, a few chopped and just a few with the leaves and the stalk mixed together. I have 
my five cloves of garlic because I like adding this for a little bit of extra flavor and I have my onion chunks that will also help with the onion spring onion flavor I'm trying to portray and as well as the amount of oil that I will be using for today so all I'm going to do is heat this up and then we can continue Okay guys, it's time to switch on my gas cooker and I'm going to put in on my pot. So, the difference between this and the chili oil that I've done previously is the fact that um, I'm going to actually fry these with the oil as the oil is heating up or as the oil gets a bit hotter. So I'm going to heat up my pan and I'll put in my flavorless oil. So while I'm waiting for the pot to heat up a bit, I'm going to talk a little bit about spring onions. Spring onions are amazing. They are part of the family alliums and that means they are related to things like garlics, um, onions um, and shallots and they're rich in vitamin K and I just always love spring onions with my fried rice, my noodles, whatever I like topping it with spring onions okay sounds like my pot is almost hot In goes my oil, all of it. There we go. And while that heats up a bit, just to make sure when it's hot, I'll just put just a few of the chopped on spring onions in. And once they start sizzling, I know it's hot. Anyway, let me just quickly talk you through a bit of what we're going to be doing. We're going to dump this, um, my spring onions, my garlic, and my onion and I'm going to put all of that into this oil and I'm going to fry it until it's brown and caramelized so my oil is really heating up okay I think it's time to put in my spring onion so that goes in now as well as my whole cloves of garlic I like just putting in whole cloves you can cut it if you want as well as my chunks of onion I'm basically all I'm trying to do is make sure all the juices fry into the oil and that the oil absorbs all of that uh, and now I'm just going to fry all of this until it's nice and brown and what I'm going to tell you is that this is going to take a little bit of time so you have to be patient, it's quite a, um, a labor of love but once you get there, I guarantee you, you'll be happy at the results Okay guys, so this has been frying for about 3 minutes now and can see the vegetables are browning fabulously so this just needs a minute or more left and I'm going to go into the straining Okay guys, so my oil has cooled and look at all of that, all of those onions, spring onion and garlic in there. Okay guys, I'm going to strain this out to separate it from the oil. Oh, there we go. That looks and smells amazing. You wouldn't believe the scents and the aroma I'm getting from this. 
okay so while that's completely draining out some i personally don't throw these away i saw them in the fridge in a container and sometimes if i want a little bit of pizzazz or a little bit of flair i would like to sprinkle it on whatever i've made be it noodles rice whatever i just sprinkle this because it gives it a caramelized flavor and just it looks pretty and nice so this oil you can use it for anything you can use it as the main oil in your dish so you'll be able to taste the spring on your bowl you might not necessarily see it or you can use it just as a drizzle as a finishing touch to whatever you're making fried rice noodles spaghetti whatever anyway that has drained and now let's get into the fish sauce today i'll be making a finger licking good fish sauce Let's do this. Okay guys, so I have my hot pot, really hot. So be careful. I'm going to add some oil. Not too much, but just enough to fry everything. Let that heat up. Wow, it's hot already. And I add my onion and my onion ginger garlic paste. So now I'm going to dangers of cooking. Okay, so I'm going to stir that until it's translucent. I'm going to sweat the onion so that all the juices from the onion enters the oil. and just makes your food more flavorful. Okay, now see that? That looks fair enough. So I'm going to add some blended pepper. Just add it up. Okay, I like my food spicy but if you don't that's fine we're different people so I'm going to just increase the heat and I'm going to stir this and let it fry for a second or two fry 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 you know as the oil has spilled all over my gas I'm going to clean it up because you have to learn to keep your environment clean while cooking Stir that. Stir, stir, stir. Good. This is going to be delicious. Just looking at that, it's just wow. So colorful, bright red. Love it. Okay, and now I'm going to add my already grinded and um, heated fried tomato. I'm going to add that, all of that. Just pour it in. And I'm going to fry this for about seven to ten minutes. Just make sure everything cooks well. I like to tell you that this is already pre fried, so you shouldn't over fry it. So, so I'm going to leave that to fry. For, like I said, seven to ten minutes. Okay, guys. So I can see it's almost done frying. So now I'm going to add my spices. So I'm going to add some thyme. Some curry. So turn it in. Mix it. And then I'm going to add only one stock cube. And tiny pinch of salt because the fish that I've already boiled and deboned has salt in it. So I don't want to over salt my food. No one likes salty food, like too salty food. Okay, stir this. And now I add my carrots. So I'm adding the carrots now because I don't want to overcook the carrots. No one likes overcooked vegetables. That's 
one no-no with vegetables. So turn this. And then immediately I add my fish sauce. See, I have some fish broth with it. I find that adding the broth of the protein you're using helps incorporate a lot of flavor. So I'm going to turn this. Oh my god, it smells so good in here. Just turn this. I'm getting excited about this already, like, so good. Okay, so I'm going to turn this and let it fry just a little bit more for about three minutes. Okay, so my fish, the star ingredient by the way, is doing really well, but I'm noticing that my sauce is getting a bit too thick. So I'm going to add just a little bit of water, not too much, you don't want to, you know, fill the whole thing with water. That should be okay. So turn it, stir it, and final ingredient, some celery. I like adding this because it adds some kind of freshness to my delicious fish sauce. So just turn this around. Stir this around. So I love adding celery because it adds a nice of freshness to the sauce. So I'm going to stir this around. And note, don't overcook celery. Just cook it long enough, about a few minutes. This smells delicious right now. I can't wait to taste this. Okay, so I'm going to leave this for about just one minute make sure everything is cooked and then I switch off the gas and tada, it's done. Oh, that's so good. So, I guess my fish sauce is done. Look at that, rich, beautiful sauce. Oh my God. The sauce is so vibrant. You can taste the celery, so fresh. The carrot, so crunchy. This sauce is to live for. So you can have the sauce with anything you like. Rice, yams, spaghetti, and if you fancy even bread. You guys got to try this. Hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Please send us a picture of your version of this dish. See you next time on Cooking with Jessie. Bye.